Well, hello and welcome back to RD Works Learning Lab. Um, I think we're on about session 18 now, and we've covered virtually all the essential tools for doing fairly straightforward cutting and etching work. But there is one little set of tools that we haven't touched on, and they are very important tools if you are going to be cutting multiple shapes and parts as I have shown on this page here. Now I've done the design work for this jig um, and I will explain what the jig is for later but these are separate parts which have been designed on a separate CAD system. RD Works is in itself not a CAD system. It is an interface package which allows you to import drawings of all file types and to get those drawings output as numerical data which can be read by your laser machine. We've now reached the point where we want to cut these pieces or generate a program to cut these pieces. If we just put a marquee around here to start with and go up here to this little box which says show path there's an unintelligible set of lines on there which shows you the path that the laser will take. <laughs> Don't be lazy. Don't accept this as the correct option because it's basically rubbish. Let me explain. I'm going to turn the paths off to start with and we're going to move across to this tool here which is called Cut Property and we're going to open up this and what we've got here is a list of each one of the elements. Every one of these shapes on here for example, that shape there, has got an element number and if we hunt down the list we shall find that there's a highlighted element number 33 which is what that funny shaped hole is and it is a hole and there's another hole over there so element 33 is a hole what's the outside shape? the outside shape is element 29 now I think you can probably see the problem here this list here is the order in which the cuts will take place and as you can see at the moment what it's asking the um, the machine to do is to cut this outside shape here before it's cut that hole. Now that's ludicrous um, so we can't have this situation but fortunately this list ordered like this gives us an opportunity to change it and edit it. So what we can do is we can zoom in and out with our scroll wheel on the mouse and we can move it around by pressing the left hand mouse button and dragging it and then we can start from a hole and we can use these two arrow button at the top here and we can transfer element 42 which is that hole across to a new list and then we'll take this hole and we'll transfer that across and then we'll take the outside shape and transfer that across so now we know we've got everything cut in the correct order. We can move across and do this long shape next. You need to be very careful and thoughtful about what you're doing because if you miss an element out you can't go backwards. The only way that you can undo this is to use these three arrows which will transfer the whole of this new list that you've created back into the old list and you'll have to start again so all I'm saying is be careful. So we'll now transfer all these holes across to the new list just watch them carefully to make sure you are transferring them and then we do the outside shape and hopefully if we've done this correct after we've done a hole a hole and the final outside shape we should have nothing left in this list here everything has been transferred across to the new list where we must say OK and now if we go back up here and we show paths you'll see the paths are now simple and you can follow them exactly whereas previously when we had things that we wanted to cut differently if you like I would have probably put these elements on one layer and then these elements on another layer 
etc. But we don't need to do that now because we've only got one layer and we've organized the cuts logically so that we can just keep a very simple program. So if we click on here, right now I'm going to be using two millimeter acrylic to make these parts. Those of you that have been watching my recent videos know that I've got some problems with my machine. I'm not going to go into too many details on that at this moment in time because the problem is not yet resolved. But what I would say to anybody that's watching this stuff in advance of buying a machine, make sure that the first thing you do is get your machine set up quickly and do some mode burn tests to make sure that your machine is performing well. You can see those in session 16 and 17, how I set those up because you only have about two weeks at the most three weeks I can't remember exactly which for eBay to give you some protection after that you're on your own if you try and go back to um, PayPal uh, what they will say is it's a warranty issue and you will have to take it up with the manufacturer and they don't really cover you at all um, so I've already been through those loops and I'm currently trying to see what opportunities I've got through my debit card which is how I paid for this um, via PayPal so I'm looking at the debit card uh, claim scheme that aside we are now going to generate a program um, I'm going to use about 15 millimeters a second quite slow I know that my power will drop off fairly quickly so I want to have 95% power and a fairly slow speed to make sure that I cut this quite cleanly and what I will have to do is between each one of these shapes I will stop the program or pause the program and let it rest for about two minutes that way I think I should be able to hobble through and make all these parts so we've set the power to 95% and uh, the program is as simple as that I'm not going to uh, show you how to save it because by now you should be well competent about saving first of all your drawing program and secondly save to file so that you can transfer it to your machine Now I've got some PETG weld cement here but this is also suitable for welding acrylic and what I'm going to do is to have a small amount of this so we squeeze the bottle and basically suck a very small amount into the bottle and I'm fairly sure it will seep through the joints so I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to put a piece of polythene down, which I know the cement will not stick to. And I'm also going to put some of this down as well, because I don't think it will stick to the paper either. It will just soak through the paper. And here we've got four of the pieces. There's uh, two side pieces and a tapered back piece. Make sure that all the tags line up like this. And that will hold it nicely all jigged up basically the tags act as jigs and then we'll just squeeze the air out of this again and then we'll let it out and I'll just there we go just a little bit and it runs right along the bottom of the joint there I'll put some on there for the vertical joint and it needs to be on there for just a few seconds and it's tacked together and then we do this one as well so we hold this clamp this together 
So we press it down and press the back in. Just make sure we've got a little blob coming out. Put a blob along the bottom there. And we've got one running down there as well. So there we go. it's only taken a few seconds to put that on. And now we need to put one along the back there as well. So that should now sit inside there like that. But before we do that, we have to put a nut and a bolt in there. Now the next part of the assembly is uh, quite interesting. I've, um, I've got these two small wheels here. I've got a couple of M3 button head screws here with nylock nuts on the back so that I can keep the tension set just right to allow these to just freely rotate. So we just take these two side cheeks and put them inside there and then we'll put a M4 nut and bolt through there. I will have a um, a nylock on this end but at the moment uh, I can't put my hands on one so we just put an ordinary nut on there because it's only a pivot point. Now we need to separate them out and pop this plate along the top here. It's a little bit tricky. We've also got here an M8 roofing bolt with a square nut on it and that M8 passes down the middle there like that and the roofing bolt will sit in that gap there, like that. There we go, like that. And that should keep everything in line. Now I've got to be very careful with these because I don't want any cement to leak through here. I'm going to put cement on these and then I'm going to come back and do that one separately. Put a little blob in there. And a little blob on that side as well. So we've just pushed those together with some glue. In there. I've made that slot slightly the wrong size but it doesn't really matter. So here's how it's designed to work. As I wind that screw down it lifts the arm up so here's its intended use. Um, it can be raised up and down so that we can set any surface of the glass, whether it be this piece here or this piece here, to an approximately horizontal position. And then these wheels at the back here touch in the bottom of the glass and act as an end stop as the whole thing rotates so that it doesn't drift. Um, because the other way of dealing with this problem Put the put the glass on there like that and tip the frame up. But as you can see, when you tip the frame up to try and get it horizontal, you have to tip it up quite a long way and you've got nothing to stop it from sliding downhill. So this is an alternative method and that is to get the glass to try and slip downhill against an end stop.